Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of Fusion 360 performance and hardware requirements. In part 1 we talked about how we can improve Fusion performance, what can affect the performance and how to troubleshoot performance issues. I have also given you a checklist that you can follow and that checklist will help you to do troubleshooting yourself before you're asking for help. In this video we will check out the hardware aspect of Fusion 360. Before that, I would like to remind you to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get a notification every time I'm releasing a new video. Now, I would like to clear out a few things regarding the CPU and the GPU, the graphic card. First, Fusion doesn't care if you are using a professional GPU or a consumer GPU. Regarding the CPU, Fusion doesn't support hyperthreadings, and the CPU single core speed is much more important than the number of cores. Even though some operations are multi-core, for example, shell, thicken, interference detection, renderings, and there are a few more. The speed per core will be a bigger advantage. Let me give you an example. So if you need to choose between 8-core CPU with a top speed of 3.7 GHz and 4-core CPU with a top speed of 4.5 GHz, it will be better for you to go with the four cores. If you will do a CPU research, you will find that more cores have slower clock speed, and one of the reasons is due to cooling challenges, which I'm not going to get into right now. Let's focus on the GPU, the graphic card. As I highlighted before, the GPU is only responsible for the visual aspect of the software, such as the viewport. And there are two common issues related to the GPU. You will try to start Fusion and a message pops up. Your graphic card might not be optimal to run Fusion 360 or crash on startup. If you get this message, then you should check out this website on how to fix it. First, you need to make sure you have the latest driver for both the onboard and the dedicated graphic card if you are on a laptop. And also, you need to make sure that you are using the dedicated GPU as well when starting Fusion. Some onboard GPU can work with Fusion, but in most cases, it will be best to use the dedicated graphic card because they are much faster. Now, let's take a look at the second common issue and how to fix it. And it is when you are orbiting the model, it moves slow and sluggish, as you can see in the screen right now. And if you look at the FPS monitor at the top right corner, you can see that the number of frames per second is very low as well. As before, we need to make sure that we are using the right graphics card, and it usually applies to laptops. We need to check which graphics card is active, and in order to do that, we need to open the graphics diagnostic. You will find it under the help, support and diagnostics, and graphics diagnostic. So this window here, you can see what's going on with your graphics card, which one you're using. So if you're using the onboard graphics card, then you should go to this website, don't worry, I'm going to put a link in the description and it will help you to uh, configure uh, your machine to run on the right graphics card. Now, if everything is okay right here, then we can move on and uncheck unnecessary effects and see if it helps us. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it and I'm not going to do it from here. So, you need to go to display settings, effects, and here are all the effects. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to orbit the model, and while I'm doing it, I want you to take a look at the FPS monitor right here at the top left corner. Now, as you can see right now, we are on 36 frames per second. I'm going to turn off the ground shadow, and I'm going to turn off the ground plane. You can see now that the FPS is increasing and I'm going to turn off the object shadow, increasing even more, we are almost 70 and also ambient occlusion, we are about 81 right now. Now if I wanted I also uh, could uh, turn off the anti-aliasing which is uh, also one of the effects that takes a lot of resource from the graphics cards. But you should play with it and see which one works best, best for you. Moving on, 
We have followed the how to improve the performance checklist from part 1 video and our hardware also seems ok, then maybe our computer performs as expected. But what as expected means and how can we be sure that it performs as it should? Those two questions are related to what is the minimum hardware requirements to run Fusion 360 question, which depends a lot on what are you going to use Fusion for. Are you going to build simple assemblies with few components or complex assemblies with hundreds of components? Obviously, each situation your computer will perform differently, which is, which is why it's not an easy question to answer. For that reason and a few more, I have created the TestReg platform. TestReg is a hardware benchmark platform for Fusion 360. You can use it for troubleshooting and when you're looking to buy a new computer. Let's go ahead and check it out. Ok guys, so here we are. This is TestReg. Now, the first thing I want you to do is to create an account, otherwise you won't have access to the table. Then I want you to click on start here or scroll down till you get to the instruction area on how to perform the test. Follow the instructions and when you're done, uh, register the information in the table. You can watch this video right here, which will show you exactly how to do this. Now, when you, when you finish, then I want you to watch the videos that will show you exactly how to use the table. I'm just going to give you a quick, quick overview on how it uh, looks like. So here we have all the um, data. This is the main uh, tab for the main uh, table. Here is where your uh, data is going to be. And here is the favorite. The favorite comes from here every time you click on the favorite icon. So as you can see, you can do uh, all kinds of um, comparisons. Where you can click on Fusion 360 and you will see the the test result right here on the right side. And when you want to compare, then you can just choose select one, select the other, and then you will get the information right here. Okay. And another thing you can also do is if you go to the favorite, let me just go back here. Then you could, if you click on this arrow, you can see you can add prices. So this is really cool because you can also compare not only performance, but you can also compare price, the cost for the computer to the performance. This way you will know that if you will pay X amount of money, then what kind of performance you're going to get. Okay. So you can save really a lot of money by just, instead of just guessing, you know, uh, when you buy a new computer, so what kind of performance I'm going to get compared to something else. So this way you will know that, okay, if I'm going to pay like 88% more, then as you can see here, I'm going to get 35% uh, more in, uh, for example, um, as you can see here, this is the open test. Yeah. So it's going to be 35% uh, better, but in the render, I'm only going to get 9%. Uh, then you can uh, evaluate yourself if it's, um, if it's worth the money or not. So you can, do, you can do really a lot of cool stuff right here. And of course, also with the troubleshooting, what you can do is you can, uh, after you tested your machine, you, uh, you're going to put the data and then uh, you can uh, filter for example, if it's the CPU, you can filter the CPU, look for yours and for someone else with the same CPU as yours. If not, then you can look for something that is similar and then you can uh, compare the results. And you can see if your computer is performing as it should or not. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to go through all the details how to use everything because I already created uh, videos on how to use the table right here you have all the information and if you have any questions for me then you can just go to the uh, forum and ask me any question that you want over there and i will do my best to help you so uh, please remember create an account it's very quickly and then do the test it's very important and in in a very short time we're going to have even more data in the table and we, it's really going to help us, all of us, not only me. And it's, again, it's totally free 
It's uh, something that I really wanted to contribute to the community and to uh, help all of us because right now it is very difficult to uh, figure out exactly uh, what kind of computer to buy and how much money do I need to invest. Is it uh, really beneficial, for example, uh, to buy a consumer graphic card compared to a professional graphic card? So you will get a real data right here and very very quickly and it's going to save you a tons of time and also a, a lot of money to sum all up uh, fusion 360 is an incredible software and like many other software you need to follow some basic rules in order for it to work properly so first we need to make sure that the operating system that fusion is installed on is working properly and we must remember to follow fusion's modeling best practice as i showed you in the part, part one video. Second, I also showed you how small changes can improve performance, like disabling some visual effects to help our model in the viewport. Lastly, uh, I just introduced you to the test rig platform, which you can use for troubleshooting and when you are looking to buy a new computer. And again, just uh, ask me and any question in the comments um, it's better actually to do it right here in the forum so we can share all the questions uh, with everyone i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any question please let me know in the comment area and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get a notification every time i'm releasing a new video and if you like it don't forget the thumbs up and uh, good luck with your projects and i'll see you in the next video Bye-bye.